Vermintide 2 is a game with currently 19 unique careers spread across 5 characters. They are all very different and today I thought it would be fun to rank them based solely off the damage they do. Keep in mind that this is just my personal opinion and nothing more. If you see a career you like in a tier you disagree with, it doesn't mean I think they're bad by any stretch. I am simply making an effort at evaluating the best damage dealers in the game. Quick mention before I begin, this video took me a really long time to make so if you enjoy it or found it informative, feel free to give it a like give a little sub to my old channel here, or join my Discord server which has over 2100 people in it, link in the description down below. I appreciate it guys, and without any further delay, let's begin. Starting us off in D tier is Foot Knight. Foot Knight is a tank. He brings value to a team through his defense and ability to create space. He has below average horde clear, not great armor damage, and possesses absolutely no burst damage. He can get some power boost and attack speed from a couple of his talents, but a damage dealer he is not. He starts us off in D tier. Also in D tier, right next to Foot Knight, is Iron Breaker. Similar to Foot Knight, Iron Breaker is a tank with solid damage reduction. However, his value comes from taunting enemies and buffing his teammates so that they can do more damage. He has specific weapons that can do some solid damage, for example, the Drake gun has good horde clear, the troll hammer torpedo has great burst and armor damage, but running either of these weapons fills a singular niche role while limiting his damage in other categories. For me, it's not enough to get past D tier. Bumping up to C tier, I've got Waystalker. Waystalker is generally relegated to being a ranged special killer. He fills that role quite nicely. She has the capability to build for some higher DPS setups. Hagbane with Kurnish Reward is essentially infinite poison arrows for her, which can have good monster, horde, and even decent armor damage. She can also run Piercing Shot, which requires a lot of skill to pull off effectively, but that talent allows her to have some potentially crazy high monster damage. However, her ult of Loaded Bow was recently nerfed or fixed, depending on how you want to look at it, to no longer work with Bloodshot. In my opinion, Waystalker feels like a C tier damage career majority of the time because of the role she has to fill. Also on C tier, I've got Handmaiden. Handmaiden has great mobility and is an incredibly clutch reviver, however damage is not her biggest forte. Ever since the nerf to Moonbow, which in my opinion is an over nerf, but that's neither here nor there, she is pretty much reliant on the javelins alone to do serious ranged damage. What lifts her past D and into C is that she can crit build with power from pain and she has a few other talents that can get her some extra power here and there like when she dodges or when she pushes stuff like that she can absolutely hold her own but she's not overwhelmingly offensive in any one way moving up to b tier i've got ranger veteran once upon a time ranger veteran was one of the weakest offensive careers in the entire game nowadays he's one of the best monster killers with that masterwork pistol his ultimate boosts his range damage while it's active he can make his own potions and bombs by killing specials but some of the biggest damage comes from his talent Ranger's Parting Gift, which can essentially let you throw endless bombs. When used with a firebomb, it's very easy to clear hordes. This talent alone makes up for his extremely weak melee capabilities. Ranger's not to be messed with. Next up in B tier, I've got Huntsman. Similar to Waystalker, Huntsman is a good special and elite sniper. Both his handgun and his empire longbow are capable of efficiently killing man-sized enemies from any distance. He gets increased damage from his ult, which makes him useful against monsters and lords. I would have Huntsman higher, but he's extremely headshot reliant with everything he does. He has to hit headshots to do 50% more damage, he has to hit headshots to get his 25% additional crit chance. Really nice talents, but it's the same reason why Waystalker's piercing shot doesn't bump her all the way up to S tier. It's inconsistent. You're not always going to be able to hit that headshot, which lowers the career's ceiling in my view. Next up in B tier is Mercenary. Mercenary is a very versatile career that is good at everything. He doesn't overly excel in any one category but also doesn't have any obvious weaknesses. He is capable of getting extra cleave, extra power, extra attack speed, and even extra ammo, all resulting in a very good and very consistent damage output. He doesn't have any monster damage like Huntsman does, but his melee is far superior, making him better at dealing with hordes while being just as good against armor. Mercenary's consistency from his power and attack speed notch him a spot in B tier. Next in B tier is Warrior Priest. 
Warrior Priest is more similar to Mercenary than you might think. They share a lot of similarities and do many of the same things. Warrior Priest is a melee only career that has good horde clear but tremendous armor damage, especially against Chaos Warriors. Like Merc, he lacks any kind of monster damage, but he can get extra power or extra crit chance depending on what talent he wants to take. He also does 20% additional damage to enemies that get struck while his Righteous Fury is active. Just another very solid and consistent damage dealer. Doesn't do anything too flashy or crazy, but is very effective. Next, in B tier, I've got Sister of the Thorn. Sister of the Thorn was once extremely broken and way too powerful. These days, after a rework, she is a lot more balanced. A very good support career. She can increase the amount of damage enemies take by either 12% or 24% depending on which talent is taken. She also possesses another talent called Radiant Inheritance, which is a 15% power and 5% crit chance buff to the entire party for 10 seconds. Furthermore, she can get either boosted attack speed, additional damage over time in the form of bleed damage from melee strikes, or two free critical strikes on the use of her ult. There is a lot to like with Sister of the Thorn, and she can pack a nice little punch. Jumping up to A tier, I've got Slayer. Slayer's entire purpose in life is basically just to do damage and jump around like a small wave of death. He can passively get up to 30% additional damage by simply hitting enemies, which can go up to 40% with the selection of a talent called High Tally. He also gets a lot of extra attack speed. His level 10 talent line offers a choice between even more attack speed, 15% additional power, or 5% extra crit chance. Slayer is very capable of dealing out some punishment with any of Barton's weapons, and in my opinion is very underrated when it comes to monster damage. He's not thought of as a monster killer, but Slayer can always contribute to any monster fight. Next up in A tier, I've got Witch Hunter Captain. Witch Hunter Captain is a great damage dealer. He brings very meaningful damage to any party because his tag allows for the most dangerous types of enemies to take 20 to 25% more damage all the time based on talents taken. He also gets a bunch of extra headshot damage, not just with his talent of death knell, which gives an additional 50% headshot damage, but he also has an unlisted extra 25% headshot damage just because. On top of this, Witch Hunter Captain loves him some crit chance. His career skill can boost the entire team's crit chance by 25% for 6 seconds. This normally long cooldown can get a massive 40% cooldown reduction, or it can apply his 20% increased damage to everything it knocks back depending on which level 30 is taken. He also has one that gives himself 100% crit chance, but this of course takes away from the team. All of these ults really let him pop off. Oh, and did I mention he has an unlisted extra 5% crit chance also? Yeah. He can also do some bleed damage thanks to Flynn's. Not only can he do a lot of damage, but there are a lot of good options for him. Next in A tier, I've got Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter is a great range career. He gets a guaranteed range crit every 10 seconds. This can be brought down to 6 by taking Cruel Fortune. In addition to that, he has a plethora of talents that either boost his damage or his power in some way. For a ranged career, he has surprisingly good melee talents on his level 15 line. Having both Assassin and Smiter to choose from is a luxury not afforded to most careers. I suppose this makes up for his horrendous temp health gen, but Bounty Hunter also can do a crap ton of monster damage by using his ult double shotted. Not only can this talent take a huge chunk out of a monster or a lord, but if you hit both pellets as headshots, you get 80% cooldown on it. Talk about crazy burst damage. Next in A tier, I've got Pyromancer. Pyromancer, in my opinion, is not a very good career at all. However, I believe this is due to poor talent selection and class design issues more than anything else. In terms of damage, well, she's a Sienna, so let's just say she good on that front. Pyro lives on crits. Her passive ability lets her get up to 30% crit chance based off her overcharge bar. You can build to get over 50% just with her alone, which is pretty nutty. She can actually be quite effective with a hybrid range and melee style of play. She also does have a few nice talents, Deathly Dissipation being one of them. This allows her to essentially use her range attacks as much as she wants for 10 seconds after killing a special. The power of this talent should not be overlooked because you can literally destroy everything in your way for a brief moment of time. On the Precipice is another nice one for her. This boosts her range power by 15% when at or above 75% overcharge. Two really good talents, but unfortunately they're both on the same line so you can only choose one. No figure. Her ultimate is 
also kind of bad, but we can just ignore that because she has a coruscation staff. Next up in A tier, I've got Shade. Shade is a pure burst damage career. Running Cloak of Pain will allow you to basically nuke anything you want every minute or so. Like Witch Hunter Captain, she also has an unlisted additional 5% crit chance. Not really sure she needs that though, considering she can parry and then dodge to get stealth and a free crit anytime she wants. This can be tough to pull off on high ping, but the potential here is certainly massive. Also, is it weird to anyone else that Shade and Bounty Hunter both have all the same level 15 talents? The Pyro can't even get crits and headshots for temp health? Ugh. I digress. Shade's melee is excellent. Both Assassin and Smiter are really, really good. She also has options for talents that give her up to 100% additional headshot damage, 50% additional crit damage, or 20% extra damage to poisoned or bleeding enemies. And Shade isn't completely hamstrung into being just a boss killer, but a large chunk of her damage dealt will come this way. Next up in A tier, I've got Zealot. Zealot is one of the more unique careers in Vermintide 2. His passive lets him get up to 30% additional power while at low health, assuming you're running health on your necklace, which is good for both melee and range. Zealot can also get up to 20% additional attack speed at low health as well if casting aid is taken. He even has an ult that gives him a small power boost or a short time as well, but that's kind of it with Zealot. But why is the old way in A tier, you ask? Well, basically, he's tanky as fuck, but only if he's constantly attacking. He needs to make constant temp health since he'll be running at 30 or less green health. To avoid dying, a Zealot's philosophy has to be offense all the freaking time. So if you're playing Zealot correctly, you should be dashing at hordes and racking up as many kills as possible. It's the playstyle of the Zealot that allows them to do so much freaking damage with all their extra power and attack speed. Give them a great sword and watch them pop off. Rounding out A tier, I've got Unchained. Unchained is kind of like Pyromancer, just better in every single way. It's the same concept, but instead of crit chance, she gets melee power, up to 60% at high overcharge. That is massive, by the way. She can get some extra attack speed as well, which is nice, but the majority of her damage comes from power stacking, either running at full or near overcharge while trying to proc Hunter as often as possible can make her a real force. She also has two nice level 30 talents for damage. Wildfire basically burns everything around her for 10 seconds, and Fuel for the Fire lets her stack even more power for 15 seconds. Up to 25%, so it's basically like a free hunter proc, but against any enemy. Unchained lacks some monster damage, but is really good against hordes and elites. And now we're on to S tier, the creme de la creme, the top of the heap, the highest damage dealers in the whole game, in my humble opinion. We're gonna start off with Outcast Engineer. Do you know how much it pains me to willingly put Outcast Engineer in S tier? I don't think you do. I do not like this career at all, but I can't deny his little immobile ass can just kill about everything if he's got the time and production to do so. Engineer is the very definition of a glass cannon. To start, he has a massive aura that gives 10% range power to him and all his teammates. He has options of talents that can give him free crits every four range attacks, range attacks that pierce additional enemies, a flat 10% boost to his melee power, and a 10 second boost of 15% power to his range attacks, a talent that makes any bomb act like a fire and an impact bomb, additional 50% power for 10 seconds when cranking his minigun all the way up. Oh yeah, he's got a freaking minigun by the way, and it can be modified on the level 30 talent line to either be really good for infantry or really good for armor. But either way, he can recharge it his himself without needing any ammo. Did I also mention he can carry 11 troll hammer torpedoes at once? Offensively, Alkest Engineer is fucking cracked, and he has to be put in S tier, there's just no way around it. Damn it. Next up in S tier is Grail Knight. Every time I play Grail Knight, I feel like he is my favorite career. For a melee only career, he checks all the boxes. He passively does 25% more damage to the first enemy hit with each attack. He has talents that give him options from up to 30% power for 10 seconds from killing enemies, 25% additional power on heavy attacks, a talent that can crit execute enemies including monsters, a talent that lets him make his own strength potions, a talent where parrying gives him 20% extra power for 6 seconds. His ult is also super good, he has options between a sideways swipe that can kill multiple armored elites with ease, and two downward strikes that are guaranteed crits that can chunk a monster for a large portion of his health. Girl Knight has no weaknesses when it comes to damage, he can do it all. 
S tier. And finally in S tier, we've got Battle Wizard. This probably surprises no one, but Battle Wizard does find herself in S tier. She passively gets 10% increased range damage. And if that wasn't enough, she has access to Famished Flames, which is the strongest talent in the game, in my opinion. This boosts her burn damage by two and a half times, and is so strong that people have called for it to get nerfed for years now. We can also run Volcanic Force, which increases a spell's power by 50% when fully charged. With a weapon like the Bolt Staff, she can hit Cata 3 breakpoints, which is just ridiculous. She can also get a buttload of cooldown reduction on her already short ult when burning enemies die. Her ult itself is very strong, and she can create these firewalls that burn enemies uh, that cross it, and things that she hits with her ult, she can stagger them, including monsters. I almost wanted to make a separate, like, double S tier just for Battle Wizard, because she is really just that strong. With access to weapons like the Coruscation Staff and the Beam Staff, she can really kill anything in the game with ease. And there's my list, guys. In S tier, I have Battle Wizard, Grail Knight, and Outcast Engineer. In A tier, I've got Unchained, Zealot, Shade, Pyromancer, Bounty Hunter, Witch Hunter, Captain, and Slayer. In B tier, I've got Sister of the Thorn, Warrior Priest, Mercenary, Huntsman, and Ranger Veteran. In C tier, I've got Handmaiden and Waystalker. And then down in D tier, I've got Ironbreaker and Foot Knight. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give it a like, give me a sub, possibly join my Discord, link in the description down below. If you had a differing list or things you would want to change, please let me know in the comments down below. I do like reading other people's opinions on stuff. And uh, that's it for me, guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. It was fun to make. It was fun to do. And I will catch you all in the next video.